as we're continuing on in the Q&As that you are asking for. My name is Andy Wallace and I'm joined by our pastor, mentor, last day's prophet, Dr. Robert Mawiri. This is going to be another good one. Oh, thank Greet you, the people Andy. And open us. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for watching. Put that like button and we want to hear that uh, you're listening and send us a message. I just want to pray for you because God wants to bless you as we share these things mm. that God has revealed to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone listening mm. that you bless them, that you open their eyes and their hearts to understanding the things that you are speaking concerning the time and seasons we're living in. Mm -hmm. Father, we give you all the praise and all the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. You just said it in your prayer about the time and season we're living in because we're in a time like no other. And what's interesting is the brethren that are commenting or sending us questions or wanting us to do these different topics, many of them are being told, and Dr. Maury, many of them are praying amiss. And that word amiss is praying what you want not God's will. But many of them are doing this and they're being told that the world's going to go back to normal, that everything's going to go back, that we don't need to worry about all the chaos and everything. We're going back to normal. But that's not what the it is written says. Well, the scriptures are clear that in these last days, things are going to get really bad and that uh, we, the people who know God, are going to be uh, prayed up, filled up, Amen. and we're going to be under the shadow of the Almighty. But as far as the world is concerned, everything's going to fall apart. God mm -hmm. says it's going to fall apart, and we are watching that beginning to happen all over the world. We're seeing the increase in wickedness. Exactly. But people are saying the increase is going to go away, that it's going to go back to normal and everything. You're saying the Scripture said, no, that's not what the Scripture says. No, the Scripture doesn't say that. But what you're referring to is uh, known as dominion theology. Dominion theology says the church is going to uh, triumph over evil and that the church will establish the kingdom of God on the earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the seven mountains, we're going to take over uh, the government, arts and industry, and we're going to be in control and bring righteousness to the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not really what the scripture <laughs> says. So dominion theology, as much as what they're teaching is true, that God has given us authority mm -hmm. and has restored to us dominion that the devil st stole from Adam, yes. that through the cross, that dominion has been given back to us. But that's his personal Dominion, me having a dominion in your sphere of influence, walking in the power, walking mm. in the anointing, walking in the wisdom of God, in favor and exalted in Christ. That's a personal experience of intimacy with God. Okay. Because when you walk with God, you are blessed by God and you're exalted by God. He gives you favor. That is personal. It's not taking over the world. The mm. world is going to be taken over by wickedness, including the church. Mm -hmm. I will say the greatest um, disappointment in this hour is the church is lost. Mm. The church is blinded with its own affluence. You know, mm. uh, we are controlled by the world. Mm. Uh, we have to be politically correct. And because of all these things, the church no longer has the authority the, I'm talking about having the divine authority, mm -hmm. being able to speak under the anointing, the word of the Lord. We are more defined by the world. We are more controlled by the world. We want to please people. We want to look good to people. We want to win friends. It, it's just like we have adopted the ways of the world rather than the power of God changing lives, doing it God's way. We are now doing things to please the world, in other words, to be politically correct mm. is what's driving us. That's why it's extremely important to see this generation in the light of biblical uh, revelation. What does God say about this generation? What's going to happen to this generation? How can we know the future that it's not going to get better? Because the Bible doesn't say it's going be to get better, but it's going to get worse. Amen. Worse for the world and better for the people of God. Because when, when it gets tough, the tough gets going. And the scripture says, when the enemy comes like a flood, mm -hmm. 
God raises up a standard. So in the, the same time the devil is overwhelming the world and the church, God's raising up a remnant. A, a prayed up, filled up remnant that is being separated unto God. So there are two things happening. The world going all the way into <laughs> darkness and Chaos. the people of God yes, <laughs> and the people of God pulling out. Amen. In other words, there are people in the world, the remnant. They know what time it is. Be ye separate. They're coming out they're of the world. coming out, and they're coming out because they know it's not right what's going on in the church, especially in the church. There is compromise. There is sin. There is toleration of sin. Mm -hmm. There is no more preaching against sin. Mm -hmm. So the, the church has been totally... Uh, it's like the devil came into the church rather than the church going out in the world. The world <laughs> has come into the church and changed the church. We by have the, to change the world, but we are not changing the world. The world is changing us. And by the way, if you want to know more about what he's talking about the church, just go back on his YouTube and look for the Q&A we did a couple of weeks ago on moral erosion. That was a phenomenal Q&A. We got a lot of comments and a lot of eyes opened on that. But and for let's now... Go, let's go to Matthew. Let's, take let's, go, let, let's go to, to Matthew 24 because this describes the present situation we're in, the present predicament we're in, the present social situation, spiritual situation we're in, so that we can see what's going on through the eyes of it is written. Okay. Matthew 24, 9 to 12. All right, I'm going to read from the King James. Matthew 24, 9 through 12. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of most will wax cold. This is the condition of the present condition of the church. Yes, sir. And it will continue to get worse. That's why Jesus gives us here the picture of how it's going to look like mm -hmm. so that we won't be disillusioned, discouraged. We know that evil is going to continue to grow. It's going to get worse. It's going to get really dark. But the scripture clearly tells us that during that time, we will be persecuted, 100%. betrayed. Happening the, now. Yeah, the, by the brethren, mm -hmm. by the spiritual people who sure. call themselves spiritual uh, church people. They will betray one another, hate one another. That, I mean, that's happening. It's all around us. That's why the scripture gives us an accurate and clear picture of the condition of the church in these last days. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Amen. But you know, when it gets tough, the, the tough. tough gets going. So that's it. I got to tell you, my yeah. daughter bought me a t-shirt for Christmas. And here's what it says. Normal is not coming back, but Jesus is. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Normal's yeah. not coming back, that, but exactly. Jesus is. It's interesting when you say that they're going to hate you. Dr. Murray, we, we don't, we don't talk about this. We, you and I are not concerned with this. We don't fret over this or anything. But there's a lot of people that hate you for what you're teaching for the truth. I mean, literal hate. We get some, we get some bad, bad emails and bad stuff. People don't oh, like I you. I tell telling you, truth. people are so mad, especially with the whole issue of there is no pre-trib mm, rapture. That is the According issue. According to the scriptures, the people hate me mm. for saying that, but it's mm. not me nor it's you it. saying it. I mean, it, it it's is the written. Word. It is Jesus saying God it. God said it in His Word. Because they can't get a scripture mm. to defend themselves, mm. they just become emotional, sure. mean and ugly. Amen. Because you can't fight, it is written. Mm. They <laughs> want to silence us from saying, he says, don't say that. You won't have any friends. Nobody will support you. <laughs> Nobody will stand with you. Why don't you just go along to get along? Mm. I'm like, no, we're not, we're not gonna go along to get along. We're gonna go with God. Whatever it is written is what we're gonna declare. Because it is written is God. That's what God wants. And here it says you'll be betrayed and men will be offended. Certainly. They, they're going to be angry. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of angry people mm. because they don't want to be exposed that this is a lie. Mm -hmm. This is not the truth. That God said 
immediately after the tribulation of those days, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That is an issue that's causing us really uh, just, um, you know, attacks. Sure. Because they're like, why don't you go with the rest go of the church? Go along with the rest of the body of Christ. E exactly. Then you'll be accepted and celebrated. You'll be great, you guys. If you only stop that, don't talk about that. But that's the most important issue. I'm going to tell you, I'll never forget probably a year after I met you and I started mentoring under you, you said this, do I want to please man or please God? That's it. That's, you, well, I'll never forget that, Dr. Moore. If you please man, then you won't please God because okay. you can't be a friend of God and a friend of man. It can't happen. It, it can't happen. That's why all the people in the scriptures, heroes of faith, were called out. Mm -hmm. Separate yourself. Mm -hmm. And they were all hated. <laughs> most of the most of the prophets were all murdered. I mean, they, they murdered them. They were all killed mm -hmm. for, for speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. They were isolated. They were they were stoned to death yes, sir. for standing for what God says. Mm -hmm. Let me read this scripture, yeah, Isaiah. Yeah, and I want you to discuss yeah. this, Isaiah five twenty. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. It says, woe unto those that do that. And yet that's what we're seeing. We're living in a day in which good is regarded as evil. And evil is good. Mm. All the whole issue of uh, tolerance, tolerate, tolerate. Forget about good and bad. You just accept me as I am in rebellion against God, mm. and it's like anybody who, who stands for righteousness, holiness, speaks for for God and say it is written. They don't want to hear it is written. Mm. They, they they want us to come up with a you know a new message of cheap grace, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you know don't go there. Just tell me I'm good. You okay? I'm okay. We all okay. Mm. So let, let's let's forget about what God says. Well. You cannot uh, say good is evil, evil is good, and not come under the judgment of God. Mm -mm. That's why it says right here, go to them in these last days that are <laughs> promoting evil. You know what's happening? The world wants the church to compromise. Mm -hmm. They want the church to be politically correct. We already did another sermon on the exactly. Methodist dilemma. Exactly. Deity of Jesus. Exactly. And if you insist in deity of Jesus, you are not being loving. That's you right. Know, you, 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 because you, you you must go along to get along. Mm -hmm. Come on, just take it, believe it, and mm -hmm. be with us. But you can't be with people and be with God. It is written, defines our relationship. We don't go beyond it is written. And we won't say anything that's not found in it is written. Amen. Because it is written is by God who created us, who redeemed us, who reconciled us to God our Father, who made us to sit together with Christ in heavenly places because we are in him and we speak through the Holy Spirit. Hmm. We are guided by the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit. We are not to be a people pleasing, you know, church. There are many people in families that say, I don't talk to my brothers and sisters, you know, about Jesus because they just don't want to hear it. Hmm. So people are adju oh. adjusting their lives to people, please, rather than being faithful mm -hmm. to speak the word in season and out of season, amen to be amen. bold, to be courageous, to be willing to be rejected, to be willing to be abused, mm. to be willing to suffer for Jesus because Jesus suffered for us. Yes, he did. That's why I love what, 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 what you, you know, we are talking about. To strengthen the remnant. To stand up and speak out. Yes. And know that God is with them. When you speak the truth, the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. The truth is what the world needs. The truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And they're saying, oh, no, no, no. You are no virgin birth. It's compromising the truth. To be people pleasing. Well, we must raise up a standard. We must speak the truth. We must be willing to die for the truth. We must be willing to be rejected for standing up for the truth. That's why I like us to look at First John uh, 3, 4, because there we are talking about what happens in our walk with the Lord. 
Mm. And when we, we, we are not standing for the Lord and we are to break away from sin, mm. separate ourselves, sin is not even preached. Mm. Nobody even knows what sin is. Mm -mm. You, you don't hear a sermon on sin. You don't hear a sermon on the blood of Jesus. That's because everybody tells us that we're just going to talk about grace because it'll cover yes. any and all habitual, continual. It doesn't matter. It'll cover all of it. Have you ever heard of a sermon about the devil? Nobody talks about the Nobody devil. Nobody talks about that. Yeah. Nobody, everybody's afraid to talk about that. Anymore. Exactly. It's like a watered down message. Do you know that I hear people still today that say, oh, there is no devil. Of you know, course. Hey, there, there's no devil. Exactly. What Bible are they reading that says there's no devil? Exactly. That, that is the, one of the biggest deception, biggest deception, that people deny the existence of of the devil mm -hmm. and um, well the devil wants you to think that he's not <laughs> real right. he's happy uh, he's very that. happy <laughs> you not only will he camp around your place he will move in with you, mm -hmm. you, you know, i mean he's like thank you very much sure. i'm welcome here yeah and by but, the way you can just keep on doing that sin i'll just stay right here with you exactly. it's okay just keep thinking that grace is going to cover you when the, when, when the when the time comes and you stand before jesus you know the problem is most of the people that are so compromised, more compromised than anyone else, are the preachers, pastors. Oh, amen in that. They're so compromised. Amen, Dr. Murray. Amen. Amen. That, that, that's why they can't speak against sin, because they are living in sin. Mm -hmm. They are so compromised. Yes. And that's why when we look at what Scripture let's says, look at let's that look at 1 John. 1 John 3, 4. All right. Whoever commits a sin breaks also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now, seeing that uh, the, <laughs> the church is on the lead to replace the law of God with a new set of Ten Commandments. Hmm. Well, the Ten Commandments, people don't, don't go to Ten Commandments. That is legalism. Hmm. That... We, we don't live according oh, to the yeah. Ten Commandments. We can do whatever we like because we're under grace. Ten Commandments has no room because we are now in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It's That's grace. Old Testament stuff. That's Old Testament stuff. We don't live like that. That is legalism. Let me say this to Come you, my, my good brother Come and sister. Tell us truth. And, and child of the Most High God, hear me. The Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. They were driving people to God, just driving people, you know, saying, this is what you need to do to please God. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, grace, the message of grace transforms us. Mm -hmm. We are saved. We are born again. And now the, new com the Ten Commandments define us. There you go. It, gives, it tells us who we are. We, we don't commit adultery. We, we, we don't lie. Mm. We don't cheat. We, we, we're not envious. Why? Because it's our new nature in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's who we are in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. It does, the Ten Commandments don't no, no longer drives us. It defines us. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. We love the Lord. It says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all our heart. We love the Lord with all our heart. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That means we fulfill the law. Grace is not breaking the law and say it'd be okay because I'm under grace. No, grace transforms us, empowers us to live a righteous life, a holy life. Because without holiness, no man will see God. That's it. No man will see God. Mm -hmm. That's why right here, we are not to break the law of God. Now, when we talk about the law, can I... Just make a deviation. Come on, come on. And, and say something. We've got a few minutes. Go ahead. Most people say, well, if you're going to talk about the law, what about the Sabbath? <laughs> that shall keep the, you mm -hmm, know. The Sabbath holy. It's the Sabbath holy. So how can you tell people to keep the law and not keep the Sabbath? Where do you get that? Well, if you go to the New Testament, Jesus gave Nine commandments that mm -hmm. are mentioned in the New Testament. Yes. He, he didn't mention thou shalt keep the Sabbath holy. He didn't say that. It's not in the New Testament. Because Jesus said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath is the millennium. The millennium rule of Christ when he will be the Lord. So it was a type in the shadow. It, 
a timeline. This was the, the paradigm in which we will see the fulfillment in the new millennium. That's why he gave the nine commandments in the New Testament. That's why you must keep the nine commandments in the New Testament because for us, the Sabbath is every day. Every day. Mm. Talking about which is the right day for the church to meet and worship. <laughs> well, let's go back to the book of Acts. They met every, every day. Every day. Every day. And they broke bread every day. Mm -hmm. They preached every day. That's the New Testament. It's every day. Monday was holy. Tuesday was holy. Every. Wednesday was holy. <laughs> every single day was holy. Mm -hmm. So these are the teaching that no, 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 no. Let's go back to what Jesus himself personally mm -hmm. who said, don't worry about all the Ten Commandments. That's why he broke the Ten Commandments. I mean, I know the Ten Commandments, the, 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 the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He broke the Sabbath and his disciples, they, they were caught, you know, well, the Sadducees are right there. Yeah, yeah, they're watching hey, them. you just broke it. What that, did he your, say? Your disciples have just broken the law, the Ten Commandments, because for the Sabbath to the Jews, it was the greatest day. Sure. And the greatest commandment. Forget about all the other nine commandments. This was the best because it was about resting. Mm -hmm. It was about doing nothing. It was about enjoying. It was personal. So they loved that. Anything that demanded holiness and righteousness, they threw that away. Mm. That's the same thing that's happening today. Mm. I'm not saying that worshiping on Sabbath is wrong. No, every day is holy Amen. unto the Lord Amen. in the New Testament. You can worship on Monday. You can worship on Wednesday. Whenever they, it's convenient and we can come together, come together and worship and break bread. There is no special day. Every day is special in the New Testament, under grace, grace upon grace upon grace. Let's let's look at... Um, I want um, to go to Timothy, Dr. Murray. To Timothy, Murray. because this will more further dis tell us more about this increase in mm -hmm. wickedness in the days we're living in. Okay, 2 Timothy 3, I'm going to read 1 through 7, and just listen to all of these, brethren. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men are going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. They'll be slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Mm. From what? From such people? Turn away. For this is the for of this sort are those who creep into households. Let me say that again. They creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with their sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come up with the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they are living in sin. Habitual, continual, continual unrepentant, unrepentant sin. sin. That is why they, they, they study the scriptures, but they never get revelation mm -mm. because revelation takes the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will only come when there is holiness. Mm -hmm. And re it's all about repentance, being convicted, but mm -hmm. there is no conviction because we justify and explain away sin. <laughs> and we, we, we are telling people to live a compromised life because of grace. That's why right here it's describing all the things that are happening all around us. Yes, sir. I'm talking about everything. And every everything, one of those things are happening. Every one of these are here now. Yes, sir. And we're facing these things. Why? Because we're in the last days. Mm -hmm. The Lord mm -hmm. Jesus is coming back soon and very soon. That is why we see, especially in Matthew 24, Jesus speaking to us about the last days. The days we are living in. These are the last days. These are the end of days. Mm -hmm. There is no going back to good times. Uh, the American dream is not coming back. Because the Bible says it's not coming back. Mm -mm. God says it's not coming back. So that means they are not coming back. So don't look for, for the good old days. They are not coming back. 
we're going forward. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. And we're going through this dark time, a time of testing, when the love of man is going to wax cold. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse, verse 12, to really to see what Jesus himself said regarding these issues that Paul spoke to Timothy about. It says, Matthew 24, 12, because lawlessness will increase, many people, the love of them will grow cold. Now, people are looking at the church and seeing the compromise and the people in the church it's like nobody is preaching holiness nobody is living in holiness with happiness mm. we have external holiness mm -hmm. a form of godliness without the power thereof mm -hmm. we, we 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 talk holiness we, we preach because all everything has to do with the preaching mm -hmm. because the Word of God is what changes people. It, it, it fills them with the joy of the Lord and the power of God. It, it is the preaching that defines the church. The compromise in the preaching is resulting in the, a compromised church. In other words, little seminates to Christianettes that never grows, hmm. never matures, because there is no maturation in the preaching. There is People are not convicted people are not inspired people are not strengthened people are not built up so they are just told you're okay you know everything is to affirm you in your own sin mm -hmm. it's not like no god says you to walk in righteousness and holiness god can give you the power he will forgive you he will cleanse you he will accept you and he will rest he will restore you and he will give you the power to live a holy life because the Spirit of God is saying to sustain us. Now that's why the church needs to go back to the book of Acts. What sustained the early church? The power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were led by the Holy Spirit. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit. And they preached through the Holy Spirit. Inspiration, revelation. It was all Holy Spirit. So the church is trying to live a holy life without the Holy Spirit. And that's impossible for, the, for, for a natural person to live a holy life. Unless you live in what we call denial mm -hmm. and suppression of the flesh. Then you are depressed. And you have to be medicated because you are anxious and you are, you know, you, you, you are not peaceful. You are not joyful because sin, there is torment, there is torment to sin. So you are tormented. That's why most believers are medicated hmm. because of the, the tension within them. They, they want to do what is right, but they are told it's okay to live in the way they are living, to doing the thing they are doing. And so there is, they, they say there's, there's a conviction. And in order to deal with that conviction, we just say, brother, it's, it's, you, you are just under tremendous stress. Mm -hmm. you, you need to see your doctor. Here, take you, this. You take this. And we medicate people to keep them uh, uh, humble or to keep them happy or to mm. keep them normal. Keep because them coming to church. Yeah, because otherwise they're going to go crazy on us. That's why we don't believe the Holy Spirit can change them, transform them, mm. and give them the peace that passes all understanding, the joy of the Lord to be their strength. We don't believe that. So we believe in medicating. So that's why the Christians are more medicated than the world. Because they are more miserable than the world. Because they don't wow. have the peace of God and the joy of the Lord. That's our problem. Amen. It says clearly, you know, these are the signs of the end of time. Amen. This is why we're living in the final days on earth. Okay. Once again, you've spoken biblical and errant infallible truth to show the people normal's not coming back. The increase in wickedness is going to keep going on. But if I'm out there as a listener right now, I'm, I, many people out there are going to be thinking, well, thank you again, Dr. Murray. You have really fired me up today, okay? <laughs> I, am, I am really fired up, okay? Unless you're a true remnant, but that, that's the way some of the people are going to be, okay? Yeah. But there's scripture that Jesus gives us that reminds us mm. that we are the apple of mm. his eye, that, that, that he loves us with an mm. unconditional, unwavering love. Mm. Tell me what that scripture is you so know, you can talk to the people you here know, at the end. You know, this is extremely important what you're saying because in these last days, 
the revelation of your sonship identity. Mm. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. I am buried with Christ. <laughs> I'm raised up with Christ. Yes. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ, Christ lives, lives in me. me. As me. Amen and amen. I, I am expressing the life of Christ, the joy of Christ, hmm. the peace of Christ. It, it's all Christ. It's not like I am motivated in my flesh, in my strength, because no good thing dwells within my flesh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Only Christ in me, He is my everything. So that's why the focus is not, I'm going to do better, I'm going to stop this. No, the focus is turn your eyes off yourself, off anyone, and Put your eyes on the King, the Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, and He will change you. He will fill you, yes. and He will guide you, and He will be your peace. You will be your joy. You will be your victory. Christ in you is the hope of glory amen, because amen. He has chosen you, and He loves you, and He wants to empower you. So sin is not a problem unless you try to deal with sin yourself. Amen. We are to cast all our cares upon the Lord on him. because He cares for us. We are not to clean. You know, how can you cleanse yourself? Only the blood of Jesus, That's and it. only Jesus can forgive you. So don't put pressure on yourself. Put your eyes on Jesus mm. because Jesus came to save you from mm -hmm. sin, to sanctify you, to fill you, and to empower you. So it's all a gift. It's already done. It's complete. All you need to do is to realize, apart from Him, I can do nothing. nothing. Through Him, I can do everything. everything. All things. All things. <laughs> through Him. Through it, not through my strength. Mm -hmm. So when you take your eyes off yourself, living a righteous and holy life is so easy mm -hmm. because it's the joy of the Lord and it, it's Him in you and through you because you are now a child of God, seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. You are complete in Christ. Amen. You have the joy of the Lord. You have the peace of God. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loved you. That means it's done. Rejoice. If you have sin, unconfessed sin, if you are living habitually, mm. habitually, mm -hmm. habitually, habitually the same in sin. sin, meaning you are actually bound, mm. you are in bondage to that sin, addicted to that sin, can God set you free? The answer is yes. 100%. God will set you free. He came to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. So He can set you free. You can be free, completely free from that sin, that besetting sin, because the blood of Jesus will wash that sin away, and the power of the Holy Spirit will come in and empower you. Hallelujah. So that means it's all divine initiative. All you have to do is to admit, I cannot overcome this sin. Mm -hmm. God help me and when you surrender to him he will help you mm -hmm. he will come through for you he's not a respecter of persons mm -hmm. he loves you Amen. you're the apple of his eye so don't despair and say well i am so I'm compromised i'm doomed mm -hmm. uh these guys are always talking about righteousness mm -hmm. and i'm not righteous i'm i'm bound to sin yes yes but there is victory for you. Hallelujah. And that victory, you don't have to earn the victory. It's already earned for you. You have to just submit to the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ. And he will set you completely free. When the Son of Man sets you free. You're free indeed. You are free indeed. That means it's <laughs> over. You have the joy and the peace. You are hallelujah. Mm. I call it the hallelujah lifestyle. Amen. I know you do. Hallelujah coming in. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Out yeah. Every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless coming in. Bless going out. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's what it is all about, to be a mm. child of God, free from the increase of sin, but increasing in holiness and righteousness, mm. joy and peace. That's the kingdom. You've heard it here today. We're not going back to normal. There is, there will be a continued increase in wickedness. But you, if you want to, if you choose to, you can live a hallelujah lifestyle, as Dr. Maury has told us. If you want to know more about what we're doing here at Good News World 
at these sermons at our radio station. There's a little link that you can go to and put in your email address and we'll update you on everything that's going on. If you want to give to this ministry, to our radio station, if God puts it on your heart to give, he loves a cheerful giver. There's two ways that you can give financially. Number one, you can go to this link, click on the donate button, and it'll take your credit card information. We don't keep it. It's a secure website. And give as the Holy Spirit would tell you to give. Whether it's a one-time donation or weekly or monthly, whatever, give as the Holy Spirit would tell you to give. The second way that you can give is by cashier's check, money order, personal or business checks. Make them out to Good News World. Send them to the P.O. Box there that you see at the bottom of your screen for that. Dr. Mori, well, these are good. The oh, yeah. people are getting empowered. We keep That's hearing it. the remnant is being raised That's up it. and everything, which is what these Q&As are designed yes. to do. I thank you for everything well, I, that you're doing. I thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You take your precious time to come and strengthen the people of God, encourage the people of God. Mm. Be encouraged. Amen. God loves you. Yes, he does. And we love you. <laughs> Father God, I thank, thank you, you for Father. those who are watching and those who Ooh, have yes. just received from you. I pray that you cause them to rejoice thank in you, the Father. holiness that comes through the abiding in you. Yes, just Lord. resting in you, Father. Mm. I pray, Father, that you bless them, that mm -hmm. you meet them at their point of need. That's right. Whatever they need, Father, you know what it is. Mm -hmm. I pray that you break through for them and give them the desires of their thank heart. You, May they be be blessed coming in and blessed going out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.